Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about whether you should put your child on your bank account. A lot, issue comes up all the time, and there's a lot of different scenarios. Some people come into the office already having put their child's name on their bank account. Um, some people come in having a, a parent have, has died, and the, and the child says, Paul, we gotta get my parents estate settled. They have the real estate, they have the investments. Don't worry about, we don't even need to talk about the bank accounts because they put me on their bank accounts. Other people ask me, Paul, should I put my child's name on the account? And we gotta be real clear about what on the account means. So I think the concern that most parents have when, when this comes up is the parent is worried that if the parent becomes incapacitated, they want a child to be able to write checks, pay bills out of the parent's account. And the other concern is the parent wants, when the parent dies, they want a child to be able to write the check to the funeral home and cover other expenses that need to be handled in that short term after the parent dies. So I'm gonna bounce around here a little bit and talk about just some of the issues that come up. Some of the worries that people have about, um, about a parent um, making a child an authorized signer on the parent's account is people ask me, Paul, if I put my child on my, my bank account, could they go you know, clean that account out behind my back? And, and you know, the answer is yes. And, and if there's that concern that uh, you have a child who might go steal your money from you behind your, back, behind your back if you put your child on as an authorized signer on your account, then don't go put that child on your account. Other people ask me, Paul, if I put my child on my account, and they get sued, can all the lawyers come take my money? And so, you know, we have to have a discussion about, you know, whose money is in the account. Is it the parent's money or the child's money? And so, uh, you know, we have to go down that road. But the bigger issue, I think, is this distinction and the confusion surrounding around whether a child is an authorized signer on their parent's account versus whether they're an owner or a co-owner of the account. I will tell you by default, in, in just about all of the circumstances, when a parent takes the child to the bank and puts the child quote on the account, they're typically making the child an authorized signer. Okay, so what often happens is mama, and this is where some of the confusion comes in. Mama goes to the bank with daughter and let's say mama has a bank account with $60,000 in it, and maybe mama even tells the banker right there with the daughter. Mama says, I want my daughter to be able to sign on my account, and mama might even say, um, you know, if I pass away, I want, I want my daughter to, to be able to have that money. And the banker might even say, well, we've got it set up where your daughter's an authorized signer, so it, when mama, when you die, your daughter can come to the bank, close the account, and put all the money in her account. So, but that's not the same thing as when mama dies, um, daughter's entitled to become the owner of all of that money. So sure, she has access to the money, but quite frankly, the money is part of mama's estate. And let's say mama has three children and three heirs, equal heirs, then that money needs to go to all three children. Now, when daughter, you know, daughter doesn't want to hear that when mama dies. So, you know, she often gives some, some pushback, you know, and, and, she'll, and daughter might, might tell me, she'll like, well, Mr. Rabelais, um, mama made me a co-owner on that account. Cause so since she made me a co-owner, I, I owned at least half of that money because I was a co-owner. And I'll say, oh, yeah, you, you were a co-owner. And so, I, you know, I ask these silly questions. So, you know, whose money was put into that account? Was it mama's money that was put into the account? Or did you put your own money into that account? Well, that was, mom, that was mama's money. Oh, it was. Well, well, whose social security number was on the account? And who was getting the interest that the account produced? And who was paying income tax on the interest every year. Well, mama was getting all the interest and paying all the tax. And so, uh, you know, well, daughter, don't you think maybe that, that you're not necessarily an owner, you were just an authorized signer and that's mama's money and it was mama's money when she died and it's part of mama's estate that goes to mama's heirs. And, you know, finally, I, I, then, you know, daughter gives more pushback. 
and then you know pulls the yeah but it's it's uh mama wanted me to have it well there's another way that mama should have set it set it up if mama wanted you to have it and then i get more pushback well it's not fair because i took care of mama those last four months and my two siblings, one's in Massachusetts, one is in California, they, they barely called. And since I took care of mama most of the time, almost every day, I, I should be entitled to that money. And I'm like, doesn't matter. And then I get more pushback. Like, you know, Mr. Rapley, I quit my job to take care of mama. And, and then so, you know, since I quit my job, then that money in the account that mama had that i was a signer on that that money ought to come to me so all those you know have to hear all that but um you know bottom line is <clears throat> we have to look at whose money it is and it's mama's money and it's in mama's estate it goes to her heirs okay so here's some of the things that people do to try to get it right some people and in our state they uh, uh, allow for this payable on death pod designation some banks and credit unions authorize it it's where mama could could go to the bank and have a bank account and and sign this pod designation payable on death and so that though by itself doesn't solve the two concerns that mama has one is i want somebody somebody to be able to write my checks out of my account if i'm sick and then i want my i want somebody to have immediate access to my account when i die to be able to pay for my funeral and pay other expenses so the PO designation, it would allow whoever's designated as the, on the POD designation to get the funds, but only not right when mama dies, but after the death certificate is produced. And sometimes it takes three or four weeks to, for, for death certificates to come in. So that doesn't necessarily solve all of the concerns. Other people say, I don't have to worry about the banking stuff because it's gonna be easy. I gave my daughter power of attorney. So the account's in mama's name, and yes, if mama gets sick and can't sign her checks, daughter can produce the power of attorney document to the bank, the bank's lawyers will look at it, and maybe they'll honor it. Banks aren't required to honor powers of attorney. In fact, they may not like it because it's either too old, doesn't have the right language. So that's an issue that we have to deal with. And then the power of attorney, when mama dies, the power of attorney doesn't good, do any good because mama's power of attorney ceases to have any effectiveness when mama dies. So nobody's able to write checks on mama's account after mama dies because the account will be frozen. Okay, so um, one other issue I wanna go over on this matter is too many people are asking me or their lawyer, if I die, can my child sign checks and have access to my account at the bank because my i made i set my my child up because they're on the account so by asking the lawyer that question that's not asking the right person you gotta ask the bank that question every bank has their own little rules and procedures um, and they're not all exactly the same so if you do have your child on your account and you're worried that they may or may not be able to access that account at a certain future date, whether you're alive, whether you've passed away, you need to go to the bank and get confirmation from them as to what your rights are and what the rights are of that person who might be, quote, on your account. What other people do is some people will title their bank accounts in their revocable living trust if they have a revocable living trust. And that, that, that works well because in your trust, um, it says that you can transact all of your accounts. It says that when you're incapacitated, there's a successor trustee who can access your accounts. And it says when you die, there's a successor trustee who can access your accounts. And then, you know, of course, their uh, responsibility will be to make sure that the funds in those accounts go to the principal beneficiaries of your trust, whoever that might be, might be your children or whatever you designated in your trust. So that seems to work, you know, well. Bottom line is, um, bottom line here is just by adding someone as an authorized signer on your account doesn't mean necessarily that they're entitled to own those funds when you pass away. If you want them to own those funds when you pass away, perhaps that should be in your you know, estate planning legal documents. So I hope this video allows people to, to realize that there's a distinction between being an authorized signer and an owner 
or an authorized signer versus a beneficiary, for example. And it's really important that you get the right information from the bank, from your estate attorney, and make, their, make sure things get structured the right way so that there's not confusion, ambiguity, and then conflict you know, when you pass away or when you get sick. Real important here now that you punch the subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure you don't miss anything in the future and then tune in every 10 a.m. daily central time, more estate planning education so that you can be armed with the information that you need to make sure you protect what you have for yourself and your family, you do it right, you, you make it easy for those survivors. Okay, so there you have it. Should you put your child's name on bank accounts? Have a great day.